day, fellow investors. You often ask me about small cap businesses, niche businesses, some hidden gems that you can only find if you dig deep. Well, today I'll share four very interesting businesses as I'm researching the whole Italian stock market, stock by stock for my research platform. One of these will be covered there for a very long time, likely, and I'm happy to share and save you a little bit of time on that research, but also give you insights on these small businesses, small niche businesses to know better in the future, okay, what am I looking for when it comes to investing? What is the risk and reward also of these smaller companies? Let's immediately start with B and C speakers. What do they do? Well, speakers. And you can see here the very nice trend with the business over the last years. You can see it is volatile, it has its ups and downs, but if you follow such a company, 143 million market cap, the price earnings ratio is 15, there is a dividend yield, and you can then understand, okay, at what point it is a buy, if you follow it for a few years, you can then also understand the management, how it works, what it does, if their interests are aligned with yours, and you also learn more about the sector. In this case, it is about speakers. This is a speaker. I have no idea about the speaker sector, but it's a very interesting niche. And if you want niche specific businesses, this is certainly one. Revenues have been steadily growing with a dip due to the pandemic, likely no concerts, but now things are recovering. They make stable, good margins, 20% on those speakers, and they will make likely more than 10 million in 2022. They haven't yet reported. You have a nice annual report in English on the company. The balance sheet looks healthy. There is not a crazy amount of equity compared to the 140 million balance sheet, but it looks good, limited that it makes money. And it is a very interesting niche business. If you want to follow it, then the next step is learning, okay, who owns it? Usually with this smaller company, it is family owned. They have been developing in the niche. They really have these connections with customers, suppliers, and that is all a new world that you have to discover. It's usually not followed by anyone. So you have to trust your own research, instincts, feelings, analysis to know how to dabble with these companies. And of course, you must also be very knowledgeable of what can happen. Also how the shareholders breed, because it is not uncommon for these stocks to crash very quickly because of the low volume on the trading. So that's also something you need to keep in mind, especially for bigger positions. Can I exit it? Or if someone wants to exit it fast, does it go down 20, 30% in a week? That's also something to follow. Next one, Brembo, it makes uh, brakes for your Ferrari. Another company, has been flattish and then boomed over the last years. This is also, if you go into these niche businesses, it can be flat for years, but then you see if they have a dividend, the P ratio again here is 14. This is a little bit bigger. The company has a market cap of 4.3 billion. What does it do? Well, very specific niche trendy breaks for your Maserati, for your Ferrari, for your Ducati. So very interesting. And I'm sure if you're a car fan, you will know what it is about. And here, let's look at the numbers. Growing revenue from 1.5 to 3.6 billion euros. Gross margins, 40, 48%. I see numbers not yet adjusted here. Operating margins, net income growing almost more than a free 4x over the last 10 years. Consequently, also the stock boomed. 
And now the key is also to understand the cycle here. Unfortunately for me here, I feel it's going to be cyclical. I often get your comments when this is luxury, rich people don't stop buying. Trust me, it's not rich people buying Gucci's, uh, Louis Vuitton's, uh, Ferrari's and Maseratis. No, it's wannabe rich people. And when there is a crisis, all of them stop buying. I think they don't have money to put new brakes, new tires or something like that. So that will certainly hit the company. Also, we have seen it hit very badly during the previous recessions, European issues, and then it boomed with Fiat, with recovery, with oh, Ferrari. So that was a good deal. But for me, it is a little bit too cyclical. Now, next one, you might think, well, Sven, if they don't uh, spend on their Ferraris, they might enjoy a drink or two. And we are speaking here about Campari, Aperol and many other brands that are under the group company. Another company that uh, has been a 10x over the last 15, 20 years, slowly but steadily compounding with a little bit of volatility here, exuberance, and now it has stabilized. It is already a 12 billion company. Price earnings ratio is a bit on the exuberant side. The dividend is very low, but they make their sugared water, painted, whatever, people love it, high gross margins, good operating margins, and they have increased their net income to 333 million. They do dividends, they do more and more buybacks, especially a lot of buybacks. When the stock price was a little bit higher, they had the money, but their plan is to keep investing, keep owning, keep buying brands, and then placing them into their distribution, what they know how to do. And their hope is to continue on that momentum despite the challenging 2022 and delivering strong organic top line growth that also leads to margin expansion. Now, all well, brand, everything. I'm sure you will enjoy your Aperol Spritz now in the summer coming, but there is this. A P ratio 36, 40 or something implies that the company will 2x again in the next seven years and then 2x again in the subsequent seven years, thus 14 years. And then we are talking about a fair valuation. This can happen, but for me, it's simply too risky, despite the brand. Now, the fourth company and one that I will follow on my research platform over time. So let me just show you, this is my research platform. I've been adding the covered stocks here, updating everything for 2023. Here is just for reference research. I'm now doing the Italian stock market. This is all the C's, this is all the B's, and if you scroll down, this is the A's. I think this is also free preview, so you can see a little bit how I work. And my goal here is to add a few here so that I can follow them over time and then wait for them to be a good buy. Cembre, likely, if I pronounce it well, the stock has done really well. The P ratio is in line with the others. The market cap is um, half a billion euros, dividend yield 4.12. So they have compounding over time. They have made the dividend 10x. It is family owned by the Rosani family. And you can see here 10x in the dividend, great returns for shareholders. And the CEO, looks okay, not big salary, small salary. So he likely gets the compensation from his interest being aligned with the shareholders. These are the products, electrical connectors, very specific tools to install them. So niche specific things to cater for the specific needs of the customers. The sector is expected to grow over time to expand. They have been growing for 40 years, 
some small acquisitions here and there, great returns on invested capital. They use the same things Elon Musk uses, KukaBots, Amazon uses for their warehouse automated. So uh, they are very, very interesting in what they do. They have production facilities in the UK, Italy mostly. And of course they depend on Europe, the recession there, but the numbers look really, really great. They make approximately, they will likely make 30 million now, 25 million. So half a billion market cap, return on equity, always above 10% on capital, very good numbers. And they have really done well. They're investing their 10 million per year. Their plan is to continue to do that as they have done in the past. Very conservative companies, step by step, acquiring new facilities next to its own facility. And the numbers look simply great. Very good operating margin for such products, which means they have that connection with the customer. No debt, no stupid costs, nothing. High net margin, just taxes, good numbers. And just checking here the Italian direct balance sheets. You never know who does it. Here we come to the valuation part. And uh, I am a bit more conservative. Let's say they make 25 million, they grow 5%. Terminal multiple 15 as it is now, I, if I expect a 10% return, it is too expensive now and the value should be around 320 million. Can that happen? Well, it was there in 2020. Maybe we have a recession, European recession. My goal is that if I follow companies from Switzerland, Asia, America, some of them will fall into my buying basket here or there. And that's exactly my plan. Follow, learn more, understand the risk and reward, get a feeling about what the business delivers to shareholders and then simply wait for the right time. How long might I wait for the right time? Well, Warren Buffett was selling these when he was seven, eight years old in 1937. The first time he bought Coke was in 1988. So he was waiting for 50 years. But that's what I do. That's my job to look at companies, research and follow them, make analysis, understand the risk and reward. I hope I have given you insights in how it works now by discussing these four companies. Of course, if you have the time, you can follow that yourself, especially the interesting companies here, all are interesting here. Or if you want just me to do the work, you focus on making money elsewhere, you can check my research platform where I try to do the administrative investing work for you so that you can just understand the risk and reward, read a report like this, understand the updates and then see how it fits your portfolio. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.